Misfit, outcast, outsider, outlier, different, weird, out of place. Have you felt like this? Me too. I knew from a very young age that I was different. I, when I was a child, um, I didn't really have a lot of friends. Um, I had a few. Uh, I wasn't very good at being a friend. I didn't really know how to make friends. And I always just felt like I was different than everyone else. And I think that's a lot of people's story, but um, I'm going to talk about my story with that just a little bit. Um, I didn't even always feel like I fit in at home. I came from a large family. I was the second in um, the line of five children, and I didn't even feel like I fit in with my own family. I just always felt like, well, those sunspots are kind of weird on my face. I always just kind of felt like I was um, not really a part of what was going on. And in school, um, just as is a lot of people's stories, there was um, girls that were mean to me, um, specifically in high school. It started really in middle school, just like it does for everybody else. But I tried lots of different things to kind of fit in, and it didn't really seem to work. I was a quiet, and um, I would get, I would think. Uh, some people would say painfully shy child and teenager and it was difficult for me to kind of break into social groups now throughout middle school and high school I tried to be with several different social groups I had my friends changed a lot because I never seemed to be able to find friends that would stick around or that would include me in everything and that I felt like I belonged um, towards the end of high school, I started dating someone and um, I joined his group of friends. Now these kids, um, they were mostly very nice and they were kind of the outcasts. They were kind of making themselves to be a different section of teenagerness, I guess. And they, you know, they dressed different and they acted different and they talked, they talked differently than everyone else that I had known. So I thought finally I had found a group of people that I could be with, you know, that would include me, that I would belong to. But I still always just felt like I was just standing on the outside of the circle looking in. I never really felt um, completely welcome or included. And I don't think, you know, now looking back, I don't think that was their doing. I think that was really the way that my brain was working and the way that I felt about, you know, myself. I had pretty low self-esteem. Um, I didn't really have a good identity for what, who I really was. There were two girls in this group and, you know, they were both very kind to me. Um, and one in particular always tried to include me. And I really wanted to be like them. You know, I watched them. They were so um, excited about life and energetic. And, you know, all well, all the guys in the group just really liked them. And they just seemed like their life, they just seemed so cool and relaxed. And, like, it was so easy to be who they were. And I just really didn't know who I was and was just trying to fit in. So, you know, I tried to dress like them. I tried to maybe act like them, but I've never been very good at putting on a false persona for very long. So, you know, that didn't really work. And then when I um, eventually broke up with that boyfriend, then, you know, that circle of friends basically, you know, melted away because really it was, you know, they were his friends. They weren't mine. So then I brought into my adult life um, just a pretty heavy social anxiety you know if I'm just talking to one person it's pretty easy most of the time but if I have to go into a crowd of people or into a new environment um, I really don't want to go I really feel panicked I, I just don't know what to say I don't know how to act um, so I brought in the social anxiety and <laughs> 
what ends up looking like when I get into a social gathering is I end up talking about the weirdest things and you know part of it is just my inability and my super dislike for small talk and you know I had discussed that in a previous video of how small talk makes me gag well I will end up talking about the weirdest things I come out you know I'll say hello and then I end up saying just the craziest stuff you know this group of people over here is talking about you know what houses they're looking at to buy and you know what they're doing at work and other things and I'm got some poor person cornered and I'm talking about you know how to process a chicken for the freezer or how to you know selectively breed your chickens so that they have good traits and I'm saying this to a person that you know not only doesn't have chickens but will probably never have chickens and you know that kind of stuff just makes me look weird and I think it makes people not really understand, you know, where I'm coming from because clearly I, I don't have a good grip on how to have a conversation that isn't just really making me look like a weirdo. And the other, the other thing about me is that I've always kind of had just like an odd fashion sense, I think. I remember one time um, someone gave me a gift and it was a sweater. And what she said to me is, I didn't know what to pick out, so I just picked out the prettiest, ugly sweater I could find. Because for some reason, I'm attracted to things that other people would consider ugly or granny or old-fashioned. And that's just kind of apparently the aesthetic that I like to put out. But that, again, makes me stand out from the crowd and makes me not blend in. And, you know, part of me really wants to not blend in because... You know, I, I love people's individuality and I want to have my own individuality. But the other part is, you know, when I've tried to look like everyone else, act like everyone else, and talk like them, I really feel like a fraud. And I don't want to be a fraud. I want to be a real genuine person all the time and just show people who I really am. Now, I've tried to, you know, join big social groups, such as I was a member of a church for 12 years, and I was active in that church. I had friends there. Um, I actually had the most, you know, healing and personal growth in the years I would have seen that church. But I never, um, you know, I don't blame anyone there for this happening, but I never felt like I belonged there. I, you know, I went there. It was my church home, as we call it, I, but I never felt like I was part of it. I always still felt like I was just standing outside this circle of people, outside of this society, and looking in. I never really felt like in my heart that that was my home. And I've since, just due to personal reasons, I've since left that church, and I do have a lot of good memories there. But it's just another adult situation where I just can't make myself feel like I belong. And I, you know, I've just spent my life, it feels like, searching for somewhere that I belong. Now, I've read recently, <clears throat> since I'm doing so much work on myself with therapy and, you know, I'm a researcher, so I'm researching. I've read about my personality that we tend to not feel like we fit in because... What it says is, our, you know, we're on a different wavelength. Um, I'm not sure about that, but I do feel like, yeah, my brain definitely works differently than other people's brains. I think of things differently than they do, and it just makes things difficult when you're trying to connect with people, and then you just have to pull back for a while, and then, you know, maybe they're like, oh, well, you know, she's not approachable. She puts off this, you know, cold closed off vibe and I you know I have been told that before so maybe that's the case but what I'm trying to do now is just figure out how to not feel that way I've basically tro stopped trying to fit in and I don't think I don't know that I'm ever going to fit in you know I have found people that get me and that understand that understand me, but I don't think that me fitting into a large social situation is ever going to happen. So, um, funny thing is, yesterday I was writing out the kind of outline for this video, and I saw a little picture on social media, and what it said is, Tetris taught me 
that when you try to fit in, you'll disappear. Yeah, I don't want to fit. I don't want to disappear. And I loved Tetris as an as a teenager, so that was just a really cool quote for me. So, when you try to fit in, you'll disappear. And yeah, I don't want to disappear. So, uh, my hair has always been really um, kind of wild and crazy, and it would never let me fit in anyway. So that's not happening. Um, so yeah, I have got some things that I've done that I'm doing. It's a constant work for me. Um, I'll just list those off for you. I accept that I'm different, that my brain works different, and everybody's does. Everybody's brain works differently. Everybody is different, and I am no exception to that, and neither are you. I dress how I want. Um, I really kind of go back and forth with this. Sometimes I try to stay really trendy so that it can blend in, but I'm going back to where um, I wear what I feel good in. I wear what makes me feel beautiful, and um, if somebody thinks it's ugly, oh well. If I look like a grandma, oh well. I avoid places and situations with negative emotions. Um, because I do pick up and absorb people's emotions, sometimes there's places that I can't go, um, or I, I shouldn't say I can't go, that are very uncomfortable for me to go. Starbucks is one of them for some reason. Our local Starbucks, I have, um, I can go through the drive-thru, that's no problem, but I have walked in, there's a bug, I have walked in and had to turn around and walk out because for whatever reason, the emotions in that place, the um, energy, if you want to call it, um, the spirit in that place does not feel good to me. So I have to just walk out. And there are also some other social situations where there's a lot of, you know, jealousy floating around. There's a lot of, um, you know, anger and um, despair and those three emotions in particular I'm very sensitive to so if there is a situation even if it's one that I've been in for years if there's a situation or an environment that feels like that I have learned to just I have to avoid it because it just it ruins my day it sometimes ruins my week so I just have to walk out and not be there unfortunately I have a tiny circle of friends. I have a lot of um, friends, but a very tiny circle. I don't even know if you would call it a circle. It's two people that I'm very close to that I could really tell them anything or call them anytime and they would be there for me and they would totally understand what was going on. You don't need a lot of friends. You don't. It, it's exhausting to have a lot of friends and if you're the kind of person that needs time to themselves and is very very sensitive if you can just find one friend maybe even two that will understand you and that get you and love you and you leave that conversation just totally energized <clears throat> that's enough and that's enough for me too I've been researching and working on myself. Um, that's what these videos are about. I'm just talking things out because it has been so healing for me to talk these things out and get them out of my head rather than bottling them up and spinning them around and rethinking and rethinking. And I'm very thankful for everyone that listens, that watches. I hope things are helpful for you. I hope that you look at this and feel like, okay, someone else, um, it's just as crazy as me because when someone comments, oh my gosh, I can totally relate to that. I feel like, yay, someone is as crazy as I am. And I, yeah, so, and then the last thing, um, you know, really kind of popped in my brain when I was um, doing this outline is we are of the world or we are, I'm sorry, let me start that again. We are in the world, but not of the world. And that, um, you know, in Christian culture, that's a quote that, you know, it's kind of a paraphrase on a few verses, but it's a quote that floats around and it's really making sense to me now in, at this point in my life because I am in the world. You know, I, am, I have to interact with people all the time, and, but I'm not of the world. You know, I don't ever feel like I have a place in this world that I belong. And maybe I will find um, somewhere that I belong, but you know, for now, I've made my home, you know, a place that I belong. I feel very comfortable, relaxed, and that just gives me peace and hope that you know, sometime, someday, I will feel like I belong somewhere. 
and I hope you do too. Have a good week, guys. It's been a pleasure talking to you this